In stealth games, players use gadgets or abilities to gather information. Tools for spotting and tracking enemies, locating items of interest, or scouting an area. I think of these as active information gathering tools, because players choose when to use these gadgets or abilities to develop their understanding of the game space. In stealth games, information is power. But how much is too much? Different stealth games use different kinds of active information gathering tools. Examples include remote cameras, spotting and marking enemies, switching on cheat mode, or clicking guards to see the range of their vision cones. The list of active information gathering tools developers can put into their stealth games is so expansive and growing that it would be pointless trying to list them all. New ones are being made all the time. But here's a thought for you to consider if you're building a stealth game. Make active information gathering tools interesting for players to use. The Dishonored series provides a good case study of how a specific active information gathering tool was implemented, then significantly improved upon. In Dishonored and Dishonored 2, there's an ability called Dark Vision. Dark vision is basically X-ray vision. Enemies, items, and interactive objects are highlighted in the game space. Players can easily gather information to plot their next move and scout for resources or valuables without being detected. Now maybe you're watching this and thinking, yeah, this works as an active information gathering tool. And it does. But is X-ray vision that reveals all enemies, items, and interactive objects an interesting thing for players to engage with? It works, but does it make gathering information, a crucial piece of the stealth gameplay loop, an interesting thing for players to do? In my opinion, there are two factors that can make active information gathering tools interesting for players to use in stealth games. Limitations and risks. What are the limitations of dark vision? Well, until you upgrade Dark Vision, you can only use it to see enemies, and it has a limited range. It also costs players a little bit of magic to use each time it's activated. However, in practice, the limited range of Dark Vision doesn't matter. It has enough range that players will see everything they need to see. Even the magic cost is negated, because your character's magic recharges a few seconds later. No real limitations here. What about risks? Yoink. Using dark vision has no risks I can think of. It certainly doesn't make the player more vulnerable, audible, or visible to enemies. So here we have a very powerful active information gathering tool in a stealth game that arguably has no risks and no significant limitations. Switch on the x-ray vision and you're good to go. You can see everything. Dark Vision works, but arguably isn't that interesting to use compared with other tools available to us. In fact, there's another active information gathering tool in Dishonored that's much, much more interesting than this. Players can see what's behind a closed door by moving up to the door and looking through the keyhole. Unlike Dark Vision, looking through keyholes has clear limitations and risks. Limitations. The player's character can only do this while they are physically next to the door. They can see what's on the other side of the door, but they can't see into every corner of the space. A guard could be lurking somewhere outside the player's field of view, and the area might be a lot bigger than it appears. Risks. The player is looking through the keyhole, which means they're not looking behind or around themselves. They are focused. Vulnerable. The longer they look through the keyhole, the higher the chance is that a guard might stumble across and spot them. If the player sees an enemy approaching the door, there's a possibility this enemy could open the door. Does the player have a plan to avoid this? Can they run without being heard? If they are heard, can they escape before enemies detect them? 
Looking through keyholes in Dishonored is a more interesting active information gathering tool precisely because the player has to pay attention to a number of in-game factors when they use it. There are limitations and risks. The sad thing is that looking through keyholes is a tool the player will automatically set aside once they start using dark vision. Because why put yourself at risk or limit yourself when you're trying to gather information in a stealth game? All of us, as players, gravitate towards convenient solutions, and dark vision is Dishonored's go-to answer for information gathering. It's so powerful a tool that it supplants other, more interesting ways to gather information. And that in my opinion at least, isn't great for stealth game design. It works, but it isn't great. In Dishonored 2, dark vision is... Yeah, it's more overpowered. It now not only behaves like X-ray vision, it shows where enemies are moving to. The most significant change is that dark vision now pulses outward every few seconds, like a radar. So if the player's moving quickly, I guess they'll need to slow down a bit. Again, not much of a limitation. It's still the player's go-to tool for information gathering, it still might as well cost nothing to use, and it still doesn't have any risks. On an aesthetic note, I want to pause here and take a moment to think of all the talented level designers and artists at Arcane Studios whose work in Dishonored and Dishonored 2 is constantly being blighted by Dark Vision's sepia-toned filter. I suspect this is how a lot of us generally remember these games on a visual level. Worlds and NPC models sapped of colour, life and detail. One of the strongest missions in Dishonored 2. No. The best mission in Dishonored 2, A Crack in the Slab, is so good precisely because it takes all your powers away, including dark vision, and diverts the pacing into a time travel mechanism. Your eyes are forced to absorb the gloriously detailed environment in this mission, past and present, and I think it's absolutely perfect. After that, though, you're back to business as usual. X-ray vision, it's... It's so good, I'm glad they put this in their immersive stealth games. But wait. Someone at Arcane Studios had a galaxy brain moment, because the third game in the series, the much shorter, dishonored Death of the Outsider, fixes everything wrong with dark vision. Behold, foresight. Time freezes. The player's character turns into a spectral form that can fly around the game space and see highlighted items of interest and enemies. The player can mark several of these, keeping track of loot they want to steal or enemies who are patrolling nearby. When foresight is deactivated, the player returns to their character's body and time returns to normal. Dark vision can be switched on virtually all the time while the player is moving around the game space like an x-ray machine on legs. Foresight can only be used when the player character's body is held still with the rest of the world. They can't move, attack guards, interact with objects, or pick up loot while using this ability. It's pure information gathering. Foresight is, in my opinion, a more interesting power to use than dark vision for information gathering because, like looking through keyholes, it has clear limitations. The range of the player's spectral form is restricted. They also can't mark more than a few objects or enemies at a time. Also, there are only seconds to scout around before foresight ends and the player has to wait for their magic to recharge. As for risks, Foresight is a powerful active information gathering tool, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't just hand players the answers. It's easy to miss something while scouting around, whether it's a piece of loot or even a nearby enemy. Consequences for poor information gathering in stealth games can be severe. This 
puts more responsibility on the player to really look around and take notice when using this ability. You can also place a marker while in spectral form, which your character can later warp to by using another ability. Look at that, foresight is interesting to use for scouting and multifunctional. And hey, bonus, you're not constantly overlaying the game visuals with a terrible Instagram filter, so players get to appreciate the world a bit more when they're moving through it. When you're designing a stealth game, you sometimes need to give players powerful tools to gather information. But without limitations or risks, these tools can make the task of gathering information feel effortless or boring. Dark vision and foresight are basically doing the same thing in terms of enabling players to gather information, but the differences in how they engage players' attention are substantial. And again, in my opinion, those differences are in the limitations and risks of each ability. I should make it clear, I love the Dishonored games, X-Ray Vision and all. This is just an evolution in a specific aspect of their design that I think all aspiring stealth game developers can appreciate and learn from. Thank you for watching.